Did you know that across the vast expanse of North America, there are 63 national parks sprawling over 85 million acres of land? Yet, amid the breathtaking landscapes and serene wilderness, a haunting mystery unfolds. Approximately a thousand people each year go missing in national parks. What makes this phenomenon even more perplexing is the unsettling testimony of those who do manage to return. Some speak of being pursued by supernatural entities or witnessing inexplicable phenomena that defy all rational explanation. But before we get into it, don't forget to follow Mr. Novella on Spotify or subscribe on YouTube. Leave a like and click the bell button to get notified as soon as a new novella gets released. Now with that said, let's dive into the story. And for this story, I'll let Ravena take it from here. Ravena, darling, over to you. In the haunting depths of an ancient forest, I unraveled the sinister tale of how destiny wove a dark alliance, binding me to a loyal companion whose origins were steeped in malevolence. The moon hung low, casting eerie shadows across the dense canopy as I, Ravenna, prepared for my first hunt. Weeks of anticipation led to this moment. The witch coven gathered under the twisted limbs of ancient trees, a clandestine ceremony invoking forces beyond comprehension. We sacrificed a pig, its squeals blending with the guttural chants. The blood, a cocktail of spices, melange and crushed mushrooms, filled a chalice. I drank the elixir, feeling its dark energy course through my veins. The group surrounded me, their voices rising in a sinister chorus. As the potion took hold, my senses heightened. The forest, shrouded in pitch darkness, became my domain. The convent aided me in donning dark attire, woven with enchanted symbols. Armed with an otherworldly vigor, I ventured deeper into the woods my steps whispering over fallen leaves. The oppressive silence was broken only by the haunting chorus of the coven behind me. No wildlife dared approach, sensing the malevolence radiating from my very presence. A palpable darkness enveloped me, a cloak of dread that even the shadows seemed hesitant to pierce. The hunt began, and with each step, a symphony of eerie whispers accompanied me. The moonlight painted distorted patterns on the forest floor as I moved with silent intent. My eyes, now sharp as the gleaming blade at my side, scanned the surroundings. In this twisted realm, the trees seemed to close in, their gnarled branches reaching for me. Yet, I was not alone. Unseen eyes observed from the depths of the wilderness, acknowledging the newfound power coursing through my veins. As Ravana, a witch born of this enigmatic sisterhood, I became the embodiment of the forest's darkest secrets. The hunt was on, and in the shadows, I sought what mortal minds dare not conceive. The scent of humans permeated the air, a pungent trail leading me towards unwitting prey. Like a malevolent force attuned to the primal call of the hunt, I slithered through the shadows, each calculated step a dance with the impending darkness. In the distance, a couple, oblivious to the encroaching nightmare, trudged down the desolate trail. As I closed in, the forest around them fell into an unnerving silence. The couple, their instincts awakening to the unnatural stillness, exchanged haunted glances. Even their canine companion, a loyal friend now whimpering, sensed the approaching malevolence. Nature itself seemed to recoil, a prelude to the impending horror. Remaining unseen, I transformed into a spectre in the shadows, a silent witness to their unwitting descent into a realm of terror. They couldn't escape the gnawing feeling that something far beyond the ordinary lurked in the obscurity. Every step they took, I mirrored, a phantom haunting their every move. The couple, realizing the eerie void of wildlife, hastened their pace. Yet the forest conspired against them, a dark alliance forged to escalate their dread. The air thickened with an unspoken menace as they stole furtive glances over their shoulders, desperate to unveil the source of their impending doom. Nightfall descended like a malevolent shroud, casting the forest into an abyssal darkness. The couple, now lost and disoriented, decided to make camp. 
as they fumbled with their meager supplies, setting up a tent beneath the oppressive canopy. I remained hidden, a predatory wraith fused with the fabric of the night. Their whispers, tinged with palpable fear, echoed through the suffocating darkness. Their gazes darted nervously between the skeletal trees. Little did they know, I lingered just beyond their frayed sanity, an ethereal hunger awaiting the opportune moment to feast on the terror etched into their every breath. The time for patience had arrived, and I, Ravena, would linger in the shadows until the night thickened, and they unwittingly beckoned the abyss to swallow them whole. In the heart of the night, a shadow weaved through the moonlit forest, Ravana, harbinger of darkness and twisted desires. My eyes, pools of abyssal malevolence, fixated on the loyal canine, a sentry unwittingly guarding its doomed masters. Seven seconds of unbroken eye contact, and the beast belonged to me, its loyalty irrevocably shattered. With the dog under my command, I moved with an unholy purpose. A twisted dance led me to the outskirts of the camp, where four items, imbued with eldritch power, formed a sinister square. Chanting incantations that resonated with the whispers of the ancient woods, I summoned a spell to plunge the humans into the deepest sleep, a slumber from which there would be no awakening. As the incantation reached its crescendo, the air grew heavy with a malevolent energy. The couple succumbed to the enchantment, their eyes closing, surrendering their consciousness to the abyss. Yet, in their dreams, a nightmare unfurled, a prelude to the horrors that awaited them. With the camp shrouded in an eerie stillness, I turned my attention to the woman. Her dormant form lay vulnerable, a pawn in the perverse game I orchestrated. Compelling her with the melodic cadence of my voice, I beckoned her into the depths of the forest, each step echoing the inexorable descent into her impending doom. The dog, now an obedient agent of darkness, slinked back to the tent, its once friendly demeanor replaced by a savage hunger for blood. The man, entrapped in the clutches of an unyielding sleep, was defenseless against the impending onslaught. The forest bore witness to the crescendo of horror. The dog, a distorted guardian of the night, tore through the fabric of the tent with feral savagery. The man's screams, muffled by the dream-infested slumber, resonated through the silent woods as the canine executioner carried out its merciless task. Meanwhile, I led the entranced woman deeper into the shadows, where the moonlight dared not tread. The chanting winds whispered secrets of forgotten rituals, and the trees seemed to leer in sinister approval. The coven awaited, concealed in the heart of the forest, a coven of twisted souls, united by the pursuit of darkness. As I guided the woman towards her inexorable fate, the air resonated with the malevolent laughter of unseen entities, celebrating the unholy communion that had transpired. This night, bathed in the moon's haunting glow, bore witness to the macabre symphony orchestrated by Ravenna, a mistress of shadows, a weaver of nightmares, and a harbinger of unspeakable horrors. The forest, now tainted by the echoes of suffering, bore witness to a tale that would linger in the nightmares of those unfortunate enough to hear its twisted melody. I treaded through the ancient forest, a captive woman following me like a lamb led to the slaughter. The rope and leash around her neck were symbolic of her submission to the darkness that enveloped the witch convent. Moonlight filtered through the twisted branches, casting surreal shadows upon the ground as we approached the hidden enclave. Once inside, the witches surrounded us, their eyes gleaming with an otherworldly hunger. Stripped of her clothing, the woman stood vulnerable, her body glistening with the dark, oily substance the witches applied. A twisted beauty adorned her form, a prelude to the malevolent rites that awaited. I marveled at the aesthetic allure, but the urgency of the ritual compelled me to focus on the impending darkness. With the woman bound and helpless, we descended towards the ancient hidden lake, a place where the boundary between worlds grew thin. At the water's edge, the witches moved with an eerie synchronicity, forming a circle around the captive. The air thickened with an ominous energy as I kissed her, 
awakening her from the deep slumber induced by the enchanted spell. The glint of the knife in my hand kept her paralyzed, the blade a reminder of the choices that lay before her. Her eyes, once clouded by the fog of sleep, widened in terror as she surveyed the inhuman faces that surrounded her. The revelation struck her like a primal blow. These were not mere mortals, but entities fueled by a sinister force that defied comprehension. You can join our convent or face a fate far worse, I whispered, the words carrying the weight of impending doom. She demanded to know the fate of her husband, and my cold reply shattered her fragile reality. He was dead, a victim of the night's twisted symphony. Fueled by grief and a newfound desperation, she lunged at me in a futile attempt to escape the malevolent grip of the convent. With a swift motion, I slit her throat, crimson rivers staining the sacred ground. She crumpled to the earth, a vessel of despair. As she lay helpless, I drove the knife into both legs, severing tendons and ensuring she could neither run nor stand. The witches watched in morbid fascination as her own dog, now a servant of darkness, descended upon her like a ravenous harbinger of death. Gurgling on her own blood, she writhed in agony, her limbs rendered useless. The night echoed with the symphony of her demise, a macabre ballet of suffering and despair. The witches, silent witnesses to the ritual's crescendo, reveled in the perverse beauty of their dark artistry. The ancient lake reflected the twisted tableau, a canvas tainted by blood and bathed in the haunting glow of the moon. As the night whispered its final secrets, the witch convent stood victorious, their ritual complete, and the echoes of the woman's anguished cries lingered in the air like a haunting melody. The night's grim performance left an indelible mark on the ancient forest, a tapestry woven with suffering and malevolence. With the woman's lifeblood staining the earth, and the twisted beauty of the ritual lingering in the air, I turned my attention to the loyal canine that had served its dark purpose. Impressed by the fervor with which the dog mauled its former mistress, I led him to the edge of the ancient lake. The waters, reflecting the moon's haunting glow, whispered forgotten incantations as I drowned the creature in the depths of the abyss. As the dog's life force ebbed away, an otherworldly connection tethered us. With each passing moment, the lake became a gateway to the netherworld. I, a mistress of shadows, called upon the dark forces that slumbered in the abyss, beckoning the canine spirit back from the brink of oblivion. The waters churned, a macabre ballet that mirrored the revival of the loyal servant. From the depths emerged a creature reborn, bigger, stronger, and now gifted with the ability to morph into other animals at my command. The once drowning eyes, now pools of malevolent intelligence, reflected unwavering loyalty to me and the coven. The pact was sealed. The creature, baptized in the ancient lake's dark waters, emerged from death's embrace as a harbinger of the witch convent's will. Its fur, now obsidian black, absorbed the moonlight, and its form exuded an otherworldly aura. With a mere glance, I commanded the creature to morph into various shapes, a serpent that slithered through the shadows a raven that soared on ethereal currents, and a spectral hound that mirrored its former self. The forest, now a canvas for the grotesque, bore witness to the emergence of a supernatural entity, bound solely to my will. The night concluded with the echoes of the ritual resonating through the ancient trees, a symphony of darkness that marked the beginning of Ravenna's dominion. As I stood at the lake's edge, the reborn creature by my side the witch convent celebrated the twisted victory. The tale of Ravenna's first hunt reached its ominous crescendo, a narrative etched in the annals of the ancient forest's malevolence. The shadows whispered their approval, and the moon bathed the covenant in its haunting glow, sealing the unholy alliance between a witch and her loyal reborn companion. And that concludes this novella. If you made it to the end, you're a real one. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the story. Let me know your thoughts on this novella in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to Mr. Novella on YouTube and follow Mr. Novella on Spotify.
It lets the algorithm gods know I'm doing a good job. Whether you're listening in the morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are, thank you for journeying through the darkness with us. And, as they say in Russia, Poderzi moje pivo ubliudok. Until next time, cheerio.